Hi, uh, I wanna welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Jim Levinson. I'm the director of the Jackson Institute for Global Affairs here at Yale. Uh, purpose of the panel today is to provide information to those of you who might be thinking about applying for the dual degree. Uh, I'm joined today by three dual degree students. Uh, they, will e they will each introduce themselves in just a bit. Um, why don't I lead off and, and tell you a little bit uh, about Jackson, just a little bit, and then we'll leave most of the time for trying to answer your questions. Uh, so Jackson is Yale's version of a school of international affairs. Um, starting probably next year, it will in fact be a, uh, a standalone professional school at Yale, the Yale Jackson School of Global Affairs. Uh, that still has to work its way through uh, some hoops, uh, but things are on schedule to open the school. Uh, opening a school at Yale is kind of a rare thing. Uh, the last school that opened at Yale was in fact the School of Management, uh, whatever it was, 40, 50 years ago. Uh, and I think Jackson will only be the second school that Yale has opened in the last hundred years. Uh, Jackson is a little bit different than some of our peers um, compared to say the Kennedy School. Uh, Jackson is quite small. Um, we admit about, well, we, we try to bring in a class of roughly 35 to 40 students a year. Um, you know, that, that's probably something like uh, one tenth to one twentieth the size of, of say the Kennedy School. Uh, Jackson is focused entirely on the international side. Uh, so if some of you are thinking about uh, coming to Jackson because it'd be a great place to study welfare reform in Wisconsin, um, we're, we're probably not a great fit. On the other hand, if you're interested in aspects of international public policy, I think we're a fantastic fit. A um, couple of the other things that make Jackson a little different from our peers. Uh, one is our integration with Yale's other professional schools, uh, witness the joint degree program that we're talking about today. But even students who don't do the joint degree, um, I'd say every single student at Jackson takes at least some courses at Yale's other professional schools. Uh, you know, SOM is in that portfolio, but so are the law school, School of the Environment, uh, if you're interested in global health or health policy, School of Public Health. Uh, so there's a lot of integration across schools at Yale. Um, and then uh, the other, another thing that differentiates uh, Jackson a little bit is that in addition to traditional faculty, and I, I think we have some of the best academics in the world uh, here at Yale and on the Jackson faculty, we supplement that with our senior fellows program. And senior fellows are people who I sometimes describe it were in the room when it, when it happened. Um, they are practitioners um, and the senior fellows don't just sort of come in and, and give a talk. They actually teach semester long courses. Uh, and you can look on the web to see the current cast of senior fellows um, and it's a rotating group. Uh, typical student body, um, is about half international at Jackson and about half uh, from the United States. At least that's kind of what we aim for and we, we usually come pretty close to that. Uh, Jackson typically looks for students who have been out of school for a little while. Um, the median age of an incoming student at Jackson is usually somewhere around 26, 27, 28. Uh, Jackson tends to provide financial assistance to its students. Um, my goal, we'll see if we hit it, but my goal next year is to provide uh, full tuition waivers to the vast majority, if not every single student at Jackson. So with all of that as kind of background, um, setting things up, why don't we go around uh, and have uh, the three, three of the joint degree students introduce themselves. Uh, Rona, why don't you go first? Bruno on deck and then Drew batting cleanup. Definitely. Thanks, Jim. Um, so I'm Rona. I am um, in the third year of the joint degree program, but um, originally from, um, I grew up between New York, Michigan, and Israel. Um, so came into undergrad at the University of Michigan, very interested in Israel-Palestine. 
Um, by the time I graduated, I was pretty jaded about what role I could play in peace building. So I took a little bit of a hiatus from international relations things and um, worked for Momofuku, which is a celebrity chef owned restaurant group in New York. Um, but after two years, really wanted to return back to um, my focus in the Middle East. And I think I was supposed to mention my major and I forgot I majored in comparative literature, Arabic and Islamic studies and Hebrew and Judaic studies. So definitely not um, the most traditional um, MBA or policy background, um, but ended up leaving that role um, in, in New York and moving to Jordan where I was based for the um, two and a half years prior to graduate school. And in Jordan, I was doing um, various economic development roles. Um, most recently, I piloted the first micro franchising program in Jordan alongside USAID. Um, but yeah, excited to be here and share more about the program. Bruno, over to you. Thanks, Rona. I'm originally from Brazil, uh, but I came to the US to do my undergraduate at Brown University. I majored in economics and international relations, so a little bit more traditional, but uh, in my years between undergrad and, and coming to Yale, I worked, I spent a brief amount of time at the United Nations, and then I did a lot of economic policy work with a think tank out of the Harvard Kennedy School. Uh, we're focused on a lot of economic growth policy and research. And that kind of naturally brought me to, to Jackson and to Yale. Thanks, Bruno. Hey, Drew. Hey, everyone. My name is Drew Delelio. I'm a third year joint degree student at Jackson and SOM. I'm from Massachusetts originally, 20 minutes north of Boston. And I went to school at Northwestern University uh, near Chicago. And I started out actually in journalism and then I caught the global affairs bug in college and ended up majoring in political science and economics and ended up spending some time abroad in China, India, and Latin America. And after that, I thought I needed to go to Washington DC in order to understand the policy world. So I spent a few years working at an international development think tank called the Center for Global Development, where my portfolio of issues focused on uh, researching the effectiveness of foreign aid programs and then the effectiveness of development banks and sustainable development finance policy. So excited to be here with you all. Thanks. Um, I thought I'd lead it off. I want to ask each of the uh, joint degree students um, about sort of why they chose to do the joint degree. Um, why don't we start with that and then uh, we can transition to your internships. So first, why did you do this? What were you doing, you know, internships while you were here? And then um, I'll finish up my questions to you with sort of if you have plans set for when you leave, what might be on tap. So um, yeah, why the joint degree? Uh, should we, why don't we uh, mix it up here a little bit? Uh, Bruno, that we'll do it back. Bruno, then Drew, then Rona. Sounds good. Uh, for me, the, I guess the main motivation for why the joint degree, uh, and I guess a little bit of background. So I'm on my third year now. I'd applied to SOM after being at Jackson uh, for the first year. So I came into Yale at Jackson first and then decided to pursue the dual degree. The rationale for me in that case was uh, kind of twofold. One, uh, access to kind of the, the both sets of classes and communities in a way that you know, you have access to most of the classes doing either one of the programs. Uh, and academically, you can really explore a lot of the areas even independent of which program you're in. But I think also access to being part of both communities and uh, that includes the students while they're here, uh, access to the, the faculty, the senior fellows at Jackson, and also kind of like building uh, that network of working with the alumni and really understanding where people went afterwards. I think to me, uh, we're trying to explore a little bit more of the intersection between both the international affairs side and uh, a little bit more of the uh, kind of business side, more corporate side. I think it was very important to me to have access to both of those communities and be able to not only learn the skills required for, for kind of both sets of careers, but also be able to talk to the people who had had that experience, who had gone out into the workplace afterwards and really helped me hone in on what I wanted to do. I think on a personal level as well, uh, it was very important to me to kind of uh, pursue the, the both sets of classes in each one of them. Uh, and I think having that immediate access of being a student of both schools is very useful and very important. And you kind of really learn firsthand. 
Okay, uh, Drew, why joint degree? Yeah, so I joined the joint degree program um, in part because I, I wanted to work in international economic development. And while I was in DC, I really saw the development sector changing. I had started my position in DC working on aid effectiveness, but over time it became clear that uh, development finance was a growing and growing part of um, the development space. And there was a lot of potential for change um, with the amount of money that was being invested in development programs via impact investing and um, financial institutions. And my experience at Jackson gave me a lot of understanding about the international system and the development sector, but SOM really helped me round out my uh, understanding of the types of problems I was trying to solve by understanding finance and understanding how some of these transactions worked so I could contribute at different parts of the development sector and the spectrum. So I really think that both of these degrees were incredibly important for me. I applied to the School of Management once I was already into Jackson. And I think the entire time I knew I wanted to be a part of both, but when I was going through the process, um, I it was, applying to both sets of programs was a little overwhelming for me. So I uh, ended up going for the policy program first with the intention of hopefully getting the joint degree and luckily it worked out. Thanks. Uh, Rona, why, why the joint degree on your end? Yeah, so I mentioned that I was in Jordan um, prior to school. And the first year that I was in Jordan, I worked on this a program to help Syrian refugee women start their own businesses, which seemed really interesting. Um, but in practice, the way that the grant was designed, I felt like once it ended, it was going to be not so effective. It wasn't really a market driven project. Um, and the second project I worked on involved a private sector organization, a business in Jordan. Um, expanding with the help of USAID to create jobs. And I saw the potential for um, collaboration between the public and private sectors um, to create actually sustainable economic development, kind of similar to um, what Drew was discussing, um, but on a more sort of like business oriented level rather than development finance level. And so when I looked at programs to apply to, I wanted to make sure that I built the toolkit and I started to speak the language of both worlds so that I could build a career that spanned them. And so. The Jackson degree really helps me engage with right global systems, how the world operates on like sort of a macro level. And the MBA really, you know, you go through the core, you learn accounting. And I mean, you know, now I'm taking corporate finance and um, you really start to understand the nuts and bolts of how a successful business is built. And um, ideally I can combine those two skill sets to um, continue building a career in the space. Okay, um, maybe this will be my last question to each, each of you, and then we'll open it up to questions coming in uh, from the audience. But SOM and Jackson both have internships um, between, you know, between the academic years. And maybe you could say just quickly what your internships were, and then uh, if you know, um, what jobs you're, you're headed off to. Um, you you wanna keep the stage there, Rona? Sure. Um, so in my first summer at Jackson, um, I interned at Village Capital and I worked on an accelerator program um, to support financial inclusion fintech startups in the Middle East and North Africa, which was almost exactly what I wanted to do when I applied to Jackson. It was kind of the dream internship. Um, another internship I did just during the school year was at the Global Impact Investing Network, which um, uh, was an opportunity I found through a Jackson alum who's working there currently. And that was a really exciting internship as well. And then for my SOM internship, I interned at McKinsey Management Consulting, and I will be going back to work at McKinsey in the US um, in the New York area after graduation. Thanks, Rona. Um, Bruno, and then of course, Drew. Yeah, uh, during my first summer, so my Jackson year summer, uh, I worked on a research project uh, with Drew and with uh, a team of uh, research at the UN Conference on Trade and Development. So uh, we worked on a research project for the summer, largely concerning kind of stimulus packages and how they were or weren't helping to meet certain of the development goals from, from the UN. Uh, and during my SOM summer, the following summer, I went to go work uh, in the public finance arm at uh, Goldman Sachs. We're helping state and local governments and some nonprofits uh, with their access to capital markets and raising mostly uh, debt and mostly bonds 
that's where I'll be returning after graduating. So I'll be going back to Goldman. Drew. Yeah, well, Bruno already covered part of my first summer. So I worked at this uh, UN uh, position, as he mentioned, along with a, a position at the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. And they had a team called uh, the Sustainable Development Finance uh, Policy Analysis and Strategy Unit. And essentially, I was working on a couple papers and then bringing together coalitions of actors in the financial system about how they could shift their portfolios toward more sustainable investments. And then this past summer, I worked at the US Development Finance Corporation, which is the US government's development bank. And I worked on a clean energy and infrastructure finance team. So we were lending um, to project developers in uh, Africa, Latin America, and South Asia to build uh, solar and wind projects. And I am not pursuing one of the traditional post MBA career paths. I am uh, looking for positions in uh, development finance uh, with a focus on clean energy and infrastructure. So we'll see what happens. Hey, thanks. Uh, so a few people ask questions that I can answer really quickly. So I'm, I'm gonna, uh, do those and then just so you know what's coming to the panelists. I, I then want to ask the panelists um, to talk about how they've used the career resources at both Jackson and at SOM uh, and whether and how you might have used the alumni networks at either or both places. Uh, before that though, uh, someone asked um, about sort of the age uh, of, of folks. Um, and whether you know being on the uh, older side makes it harder to, to get in, quite the opposite. Um, we, we really uh, try to bring in a pretty seasoned uh, student body, to be honest. Um, almost all of our students have had some, not, well, yeah, large fraction, almost all probably have had some international experience uh, before they came. Um, a number of our students uh, arrive, you know, they're in their 30s, mid 30s. Um, you know, what we, we've had a student in their 50s, although that's quite unusual. Um, but we are really looking for students who kind of know what they want to do. Um, Jackson students of the Americans, um, I'd say about a third, well, a quarter to a third um, have served in the military. Uh, and probably about a third are former Peace Corps uh, volunteers. So that's a group that has been out for, for in many cases, several years and lived in pretty complicated places. Uh, someone asked whether Jackson requires uh, standardized test scores. I should know this, I'm pretty sure we do. Um, may, okay, yes, panelists are saying we do. Um, but the fact that I wasn't completely sure should tell you a little something about how important we think they are. Um, you know, we pay attention to them, but at Jackson, we are pretty focused on bringing in students with really interesting backgrounds. Uh, I think that's illustrated, in fact, if you listen to what Bruno, Drew, and Rona were doing before they came. Um, so yes, we, we do have, we do use standardized test scores. They are required, but we don't you know, they're only one piece of the package uh, of the admissions application. And I'm not even sure that they're uh, a super important part. Um, so with, with those, and then someone asked about how international is the student population at Jackson and at SOM. Uh, SOM, the figure is 44% uh, of the students hold an international passport. Uh, and at Jackson, it'd be a little bit higher than that. Probably more like about half. Uh, and again, it, it varies from, from year to year. So with those kind of factual things um, out there, maybe uh, you guys could say a little bit about sort of what career resources uh, you, you've used, alumni networks to, to the extent you might have, have relied on some of those. Um, for the, and on the Jackson side, since we're a fairly new school, if you've talked to, um, some of our, you know, we don't have a huge alumni network, although we have some, some of you have worked with them, but we also use our uh, board of advisors in that context. So, um, I don't know, Drew, you wanna go first this time and then uh, Rona, then Bruno. Sure, yeah. So in terms of uh, leveraging the alumni network, I mean, you, you, you make a point, Jim, that it's small, but 
what I would say is the benefit of that is that people are willing to go to bat for you because of just how small the alumni network is. And everyone is just incredibly supportive of each other. I don't think I've ever reached out to a Jackson alum and not received a response within 48 hours. And I've reached out to a lot of them and we've been on uh, two career treks to DC via Jackson. And in both of those, um, there's been countless alums who have come and talked to us on panels, given us business cards, offered their emails, um, made time for coffees, uh, virtual for the most part in the world that we've lived in um, for the majority of our time in grad school. Um, and then um, for SOM, I mean, similar, SOM is a smaller, uh, a smaller program relative to other MBAs. And I've just found everyone to be incredibly useful. Um, I think most of my my, this past summer in particular was via an SOM connection. Um, in my first summer, um, I, when I was at Jackson, it was incredibly helpful to have the resources that I did um, in making that choice. Um, awesome. So I was gonna just echo exactly what Bruno, what, sorry, Drew just said, um, that Jackson's alumni base is small, but it's mighty and, um, because the cohorts are so small, people really, really care about the Jackson community. Um, and I, as a student at Jackson, have just really loved getting to know the alums because people who choose to go to Jackson have something in common and um, a shared experience that really bonds us. And so um, my, I've, similar to Drew, never not heard back from a Jackson alum who I've e reached out to or emailed. Um, and similarly, um, have found internships through um, Jackson alums who I've had conversations with. Um, and then on like the SOM side, um, the consulting club programming was very essential to me finding an internship at McKinsey this past summer. And um, there are also Jackson alums there who I connected with. And obviously every time I connected with a Jackson student, it was unique because it is such a small group, um, but everyone is really always there to fight to help you succeed. Yeah. yeah I don't have yeah, I don't have too much more to add. I think uh, one thing I would add is also, you know, echoing uh, Jackson is small. And I think one of the things is also, as Jim mentioned, everyone's background is quite different when you're coming in. And that's reflected equally when people leave. So I feel like uh, in, in general, the despite sizes, the Jackson kind of alumni tend to be like uh, disproportionately dispersed geographically and in terms of interest that they're pursuing afterwards. So that's very helpful, even if it's not uh, someone at every organization you want to talk to, there's people with experience in each sector. So in terms of like really learning about pursuing different career paths, I think that was invaluable. And towards the SOM career, uh, office and career resources, I think, you know, was extremely helpful as well in terms of being a larger program of having uh, uh, sort of structured uh, parts of both the CDO and as Rona mentioned, some student clubs that really for the traditional pathways uh, really have kind of a process that's very well put together and kind of prepares you very solidly. And then having generally also more than other business schools, de uh, definitely an alumni population that has gone on to other sectors, as especially within nonprofit and uh, public sectors as well, even at SOM. And I think that's also very helpful for, for the same reason of getting that breadth of experience when you talk to people. Okay, here's, here's a question. I don't know which of you might be best uh, want to want to take it on. Uh, someone asked, "What international opportunities can one experience through Jackson or SOM, either academic or experiential learning?" If I can take take a first stab at that, uh, I'm not. Feel free to clarify. I'm not entirely sure uh, if you're looking for a specific type of answer. Whoever asked the question, but I think. In terms of experiential for learning, I think there's ample opportunity, especially at Jackson, but also at SOM. Uh, the topics you're covering, a lot of the classes, in fact, I'd probably say most of the classes are focused on international issues. Naturally, it's a global affairs school. There is a handful of courses that also uh, provide opportunity at Jackson and at SOM, and even some joint courses between the two to work directly with organizations, either public sector or private sector in places abroad. Uh, in normal years, some of those involve like travel to on-site, uh, to place that you're learning about. In the past two years, naturally that has not happened because of COVID, but I think the, from everything I've heard, the, the intent is to resume once again to have these experiences of where you spend a couple of days to a week or something abroad. 
uh, and not at Jackson, but at SOM during your time there, there, it's possible to pursue like a study abroad. I think there's, you know, you need to, I think I would recommend having a good reason for why it's a short program, even if you're doing the joint degree, uh, missing time at other one of the schools, you're missing great opportunities, but it's definitely possible. Yeah, there's um, a ton of international experience, just to give a couple of like examples from my own time um, in the programs. Um, SOM has a class called Global Social Entrepreneurship, and uh, Rona and I were actually in the same group, but essentially it's a class where you consult with social enterprises in developing countries. And it's, we did it when we were in Kenya working with a technology company there, um, but they also offer the class in to consult with enterprises in India, Brazil, and Indonesia. So it's an incredible opportunity and a lot of Jackson people do that uh, every year, some of whom go on to do the joint degree, but some of whom just um, work very well dynamically with SOM students. Um, and there's also a lot of uh, environmental school students and public health students in that program as well. Jackson has a couple classes that are international experience oriented as well. Um, I was a teaching assistant for uh, Claire Lockhart. Uh, one of our fellows teaches a class uh, where the students got to work uh, directly consulting with uh, government and agencies and international organizations. And that was essentially the project um, throughout the entire course was you had a client and you had to deliver them a presentation based on something that uh, they wanted uh, to implement. So tons of opportunities to engage with uh, international organizations, governments, and social enterprises. Um, and Rona, given your background, I'm curious, I, I'm spo not supposed to ask questions, but it's kind of related. Um, are you doing the course that's headed to Jordan this spring? Um, that's a great question. Um, yeah, so Shoshana Stewart is a senior fellow. She's teaching a course that is going to Jordan um, to visit her, that NGO she runs called Turquoise Mountain. I'm actually not in that class, although I wish I were, um, just because I figured I might try to go somewhere new this year. Um, but on that note, I was going to mention, in addition to all of the official school organized trips, there's a lot of student initiative to organize treks. So you'll notice international students, both at SOM and at Jackson, will decide to organize a trip to a country that they're from or where they've lived. Um, and so there's a lot of opportunity to experience many places, both inside the classroom and outside of it with your classmates. Yeah. And I should add, you know, we're ramping up the international travel again. Uh, the students here on this panel, um, you know, for one and a half, almost two of two years of their time, um, there was very little international travel. Typically, there's there's a lot more. Um, I know this spring when we expect things to open up, as Rona mentioned, there's a class that'll be headed to Jordan. Uh, I just signed, there's a class that's doing an after action report on Afghanistan. I think uh, some of them will be headed to uh, the Emirates and possibly to Pakistan. Um, so the, the tra travel's kicking up again. Um, here's an interesting one. Someone asked, how is the typical workload different at Jackson versus SOM? I can uh, try to jump in on this one. Um, the type of work you do in the first year at Jackson versus the first year at SOM is quite different. Um, Jackson courses tend to have a large capstone project at the end of the semester. You write a long paper or you work on some other sort of larger project. Um, and then when we switched over for the first year of our MBA, I might, I don't want to speak for all three of us, but it was, a, it was a change because suddenly you have all kinds of problem sets and homeworks and team assignments due basically almost every day. Um, and so, whereas Jackson allows you to have a bit more influence over how you spend your time and when you do your work. Um, the MBA becomes a very consuming process just because of the way the courses are structured, especially during the core curriculum, which is like the first year of your MBA. Rune or Drew, do you want to weigh in or should we should we move on? Yeah, I, I can back up, you know, Rona said, I think that's broadly definitely how I would classify them. Uh, plenty of exceptions and differences, but I think overall, uh, a lot of the Jackson courses tend to be also because their size more focused on uh, reading and discussion and definitely a longer project, whereas SOM courses on the whole and definitely the core courses tend to be more focused on building a particular skill, uh, usually through problem sets or, or more often smaller uh, workload yeah, assignments throughout the semester.
Yeah, only thing I would add is it's been incredibly helpful to understand like what type of work I, I, I like doing in that like you at Jackson get to write a lot of policy memos, a lot of papers, a lot of presentations at SOM, you get to work in teams to solve complex problems. And it's, they're two very different um, types of assignments. And that's been very helpful for me is not only I think about what I'm passionate about, but also like what type of tasks I like get energy out of on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's been um, a great learning experience doing all of these different types of assignments. Thanks. Uh, a couple questions that I'll, I'll answer that have come across. Um, someone asked, are any Jackson students pursuing entrepreneurial projects? Um, absolutely. Uh, so Jackson is located on Hill House Avenue and uh, Hill House Consulting opened up recently in Kazakhstan. Uh, is one of their offices, as well as uh, other parts of Central Asia. So students have opened a consulting firm. Um, students are doing a mobility-based, some Jackson students are working on a mobility-based startup in Kenya. Um, so a number of entrepreneurial projects uh, are, are going on, um, run, run by Jackson students. Uh, Rona, Bruno, Drew may, may know of some others, but I'd, I'd say that, uh, that that certainly uh, is one of the things that people do. Someone else asked if international experience is required uh, or preferred uh, for applying to Jackson. Um, no, it's not required. Um, I, you know, we're, we're looking for people who are interested in moving their careers forward. Um, possibly, you know, a lot of the, a lot of our students have worked overseas, um, or if you're a foreign student. Uh, worked outside of their own country, but by no means is it uh, mandatory. Um, every application is looked at individually. Um, and someone else asked about uh, if Jackson looks for students from specific academic programs, and the answer is absolutely not. Um, you know, certainly some students come in from sort of the traditional political science, economics backgrounds, but I'd actually that, that's a my, that's a pretty distinct minority. Um, you know, our students come in, some of them have worked as, in, you know, have engineering backgrounds. Some of our students have worked in public health. Uh, some of our students have worked in the arts. Um, so really I'd say all, uh, all backgrounds are, are appreciated. And we actually try really hard to build a diverse an intellectually diverse um, student body, diverse in other uh, dimensions too. Um, but part of that diversity is, is getting students who have had different uh, backgrounds coming in. So uh, there's no single one that, that uh, we're really looking for. Um, maybe here's something uh, for, for you guys. Um, someone asked, can you talk about how joint degree students balance their time between the two communities? Um, that's a great question. Who wants to lead off on that? I'll, I'll lead off on this one. Uh, I think, first of all, I think one, one thing that definitely helps is that the two schools are half a block away from each other. So just geographically, it's a lot easier to balance uh, the two schools in terms of classes, but in terms of people as well. I think they're, at least for me, and I think this tends to be true for most people, uh, because your first two years are kind of each year in one of the schools, uh, you tend to be a little bit more focused uh, in terms of community, in terms of your social life with, around that school for that. So for me and for most people, you know, Jackson's the first year and then SOM, uh, the first year of your MBA at SOM during the second year. Definitely that was the case for me that during those years, uh, socially and in terms of my free time and where I would go for, for lounges for studying was more focused around that school. But I think that's not to say that it was, uh, you know, that I wasn't engaging with the other school. I think, uh, in fact, I probably during my second year made even more effort to kind of like stay engaged with Jackson because all my classes were at SOM. Uh, and that meant both um, personal level kind of hanging out with the, uh, the people that I had met the first year, but also trying to go to more events and go to more extracurriculars because my curriculars were more at SOM. I, I think that's fairly straightforward and easy to do. I think, you know, uh, there's at either school, there's way too much for you to do anyway, if you, even if you wanted to do it all. So it might be difficult if you're a person who kind of wants to do absolutely everything, but you'd struggle at that even at other school itself. So it's, it's definitely manageable. Um, yeah, just to echo what Bruno is, is discussing, my advice to everyone is usually to try to 
commit a little bit to one school and then the other. So when you're a first year at Jackson, it's such a special experience to really bond with the 30 to 40 people in your cohort. Um, you take your core classes together and you really get to delve into th that intellectual community, which I think is really important when you then go over to do the MBA and you're in a much broader group of people with much broader interests. Um, and so my experience was that in my first year at Jackson, I was probably overly committed to the com building community at Jackson. I tried to organize all kinds of events. I like wanted to start student government at Jackson. So then there was a student government at Jackson and I really wanted to do that. And then I went over to the MBA and maybe I'm the person that wants to do everything that Bruno is describing. But then at SOM, I was like, I'm gonna be president of the consulting club. I wanna be involved here too. Um, and so you can really, and I know um, Drew is also a club leader at SOM as well. So um, it's possible, I think, or I would like to think that it's possible to be fully invested in both. Um, but of course it's sad when your classmates at Jackson graduate and um, you know, they're, you know, they're not here this year, um, but there's another class of Jackson students that we get to know now. So uh, yeah, Drew, I don't know if you have anything to add. Yeah, no, nothing really. I think uh, we obviously had somewhat of an odd year and that we were entirely remote for our first year at business school. And just by by virtue, I was like pretty conservative in terms of uh, COVID last year and going to classes and whatnot. So I feel like I wasn't able to integrate into SOM as well last year, but I've made a big effort to try and do that this year by being involved with clubs there. Um, so I think that's pretty unique experience though. I think the typical experience is the one that the uh, people below us um, who are second years in the joint degree program now, which is very invested in SOM after doing their first year and being very invested at Jackson. And then you kind of straddle in between. But I guess for context, like I have two Jackson classes right now, two SOM classes, and one that's listed at both. So I think academically, I feel like I go back and forth and I have classes with a ton of Jackson people and a ton of SOM people. And it's the best of both worlds, truly. Like, I feel like I'm just being enriched constantly by diverse perspectives from the policy world and the business world. And I've really embraced that in my last year, just trying to absorb all of it that I can from such, a, such different perspectives. I'll answer um, a couple of the factual questions and then pitch another one back uh, to the students. Uh, someone asked, you know, noted that the application for Jackson requires three letters of recommendation. Uh, is it necessary that they be, you know, professional or academic or a combination? Um, and the answer is get letters from people who know you. You know, if you've been out of school for 10 or 15 years, then getting letters from, an, from a college professor probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, you wanna get letters from people uh, with whom you've worked. On the other hand, if you, you know, were in school recently and you've stayed in touch with faculty, then, then it, it starts to make a lot more sense. Um, one of the questions that uh, came across uh, asked, what about the sense of community? Um, either within SOM, within Jackson, or, or, and or within the joint degree cohort itself. Um, Rona is an obvious one to lead off on this because she's created a lot of that. But uh, Drew and, and Bruno, why don't you guys take, between the three of you, maybe weigh in on that. Um, I can jump in briefly. I, I know someone asked specifically about the joint degree program. I actually think within the joint degree, we're all actually very good friends. Um, we need to rebrand. We've been calling it the Mamba group because it was the MAMBA, but Jackson is now offering an MPP, so it doesn't quite have the same ring to it. Um, but we, like the Mamba crew is really tight knit um, across years. And we often have events for like all three years of, of Mamba to be rebranded group uh, student events. Um, and then in terms of just community at SOM and at Jackson, both are really strong. Sometimes it's a bit challenging because you don't know which gathering to go to. Um, sometimes it's exciting because you can bring the two groups together and they get to meet students that they wouldn't have met otherwise and you get to be that bridge. Yeah, I think Rona really covered it. I mean, we're we're a small um, but very tight-knit group, but I, I mean, it, there's 10 or 12 of us across three years right now, I think. And uh, like we have gatherings and it's, uh, we, we all just have like such great experiences and can learn from each other. And I think it's been great as a third year now to really help mentor um, some of the younger students just as a P 
people were mentoring us uh, for the past year or two, and it's been incredibly valuable um, for that as well. But I lead a couple clubs at SOM. I'm in charge of the Economic Development Club and uh, the Business and Politics Clubs. And I'm constantly bringing uh, Jackson students over to our events at SOM. Uh, we also have brought the World Fellows uh, over to speak at SOM. The World Fellows is a group at Jackson of mid-career practitioners from um, other countries who come to Jackson for a few months um, to incubate an idea. So I really have made it a priority via my social impact focused clubs to, to bring folks from the Jackson community over. And it's been uh, one of the highlights of my year so far. Thanks. Um, one that, that someone asked, uh, what, how, do, how, do, how would one or how might I differentiate um, the Jackson, what will be the Jackson School from uh, the Kennedy School? And I'm, I'm happy to take that one on. Um, an awful lot of the students who apply now to Jackson also apply to the Kennedy School and, and vice versa. Uh, let me lead with what I think is the most important point, which is both of them are just fantastic programs. Um, and you know, I, I, I think it's important to, to get that out there. Um, while they're really both great programs, they are quite different. Um, and some of the dimensions in which they're, they're different, I'll hit on and then, um, I don't know, Bruno spent a little time there, so maybe he wants to, to weigh in. He was at a research center there for a little bit. Uh, probably the biggest, well, one of the big, really obvious differences is that of scale. So Kennedy School runs lots of different degrees and lots of different programs. And I might be off by a little bit, but I'm not off by a huge amount if I say that if you just count the number of people entering the doors in a given year for all their programs, it's probably a number between six and seven, maybe even up to 800 now. Um, and at Jackson, it's a number more like 40. Um, so the scale is massively different. Um, you know, at Jackson, the Jackson cohort, everybody knows everybody. Um, and we, because we have a small cohort, we can, we can kind of, you know, create a, a sense of community that I think is probably, I would guess, is probably a little harder to do uh, in, in a much larger program. You know, I think one of the drawbacks of a small program would be that uh, less things are offered. Uh, and Jackson's approach to that has been by integrating with the rest of Yale. Um, it is seamless to take courses either in the Faculty of Arts and Sciences uh, and at the other professional schools. Um, at the Kennedy School, it's, it's a little more of a self-contained uh, place. Um, you know, Harvard has a tremendous portfolio of professional schools, as, as I, I would argue does Yale. Um, but at Yale, it's pretty easy if you're at one professional school to take courses at the other. Uh, and, and that by reputation anyway, is it's a little trickier if you're at, uh, you know, at the Kennedy School to take a course at, at say, Yale Law, at uh, Harvard Law School. So that, that would be one of the uh, differentiators, I think. Um, let's see, um, other questions that uh, folks had? Um, yeah, actually, why don't I wrap up with, with a last question uh, to each of you uh, on the panel. And that is, what advice do you have for candidates thinking about applying to the joint degree program? And are there any things that you sort of wish you'd known? So if each of you could take uh, that, that'll probably take us up to, to 1250. Uh, Bruno, why don't you go first, then Rona, then Drew. Sure, I'll kick it off. I think uh, in terms of my best advice to people applying for, for the joint degree, and this is also valid if you're applying just one or the other, but I think it's really helpful when you're preparing to apply and preparing to go to school, if you really kind of sit down and really think about, okay, what do I want to get out of going back to school, out of a graduate program? Uh, and how do I think it'll help me build myself, build my career and like prepare me for the next step? I say that as uh, number one, it's very useful because your essays will ask about that. So if you have a, a set answer that you've thought about and you uh, really have reflected on, it'll show through and whatever you write for both schools. But I say that also on a practical matter because 
it, you know, if you do the joint degree, it's one extra year, it's three years, but those three years really fly by. And there's just so many things to do. And by nature of both programs, they're so open-ended that you have the freedom to really pursue uh, almost any class that you want. So it's really important to kind of, uh, any opportunity you have to kind of focus yourself and always be reflecting of like, okay, what do I want to get out of it? What do I want to build? What do I want, what areas do I want to explore? And kind of set off and pursue that. Because if you have an objective in mind, even if you know, you're trying to explore something completely new that you haven't worked on before, at least if you set yourself to it, you might like it, you might not like it, but you'll learn something from the experience and you'll be, you'll have a plan throughout and that'll help guide you and help make you uh, better prepared for the next step post-school. Um, yes, definitely echo what Bruno just um, said. I think advice for your actual application is to really know why you need grad school to achieve your goals. Um, and if you get clear on that, it can help you understand both what you want to do with your time in school and really help admissions committees understand why you need to be there and why you will be you know, a positive contributor to the graduate school community um, in the present and in the future. Um, and when it comes to joint degrees, something somebody asked me when I was applying, which was helpful, was you know, which degree is your priority? Is it the policy degree or is it the MBA? And um, based on that answer, it can help guide you know, how important it is for you to apply to the joint degree, which joint degree programs you want to apply to, and whether, for example, this one is the right one for you. Um, and a lot of that can also come from really understanding what career you're aspiring to. And that goes back to my first point of really knowing what you need to get out of graduate school to achieve your goals. Yeah, I think what Bruno and Rona have said um, really says it all. So I, I think what I'll say is more so just an affirmation of what they've said. Um, but I, I would say like be, you gotta be very clear about wh what you want to get out of both of these programs if you want to do both of them. Because for a lot of folks um, that we've gone to school with, um, some people only did one of the program and they thought very hard about whether it made sense to do both. Um, so I think it's really important to have a clear like theory of the case for your own short, medium and long-term goals, and then sort of project that onto your, um, your grad school trajectory and what you think the makes the most sense. Because um, you might not need to fill all these gaps um, via both of these programs, and maybe you only need one. Um, maybe you need a little bit more time to incubate some ideas. Uh, maybe you wanna make a bigger pivot, and that means that you need to take a little bit more time. I mean, I think the most important thing though is before you come in, I think really thinking through your own, um, your, your own pitch for yourself. And that can change. Um, a lot of people come to these schools and completely reinvent themselves. And that's the beauty of grad school is the opportunity to um, really lean into what's uncomfortable um, and constantly iterate on what it is that you think you want to do. Um, and I think that's um, maybe that would, both of those programs are the best way to do that, but not necessarily. Um, I think we are three um, people, but we're not, some people who have similar interests to us certainly made different choices and both of those choices make sense depending on your circumstances. Thanks, uh, especially, you know, thank you, Bruno, Rona, Drew uh, for joining. Um, I wanna thank all of the audience uh, for taking the time. Uh, and I want to encourage you, if you know, if you've thought about listen to to this panel, and, and you think it might make sense to apply to the joint degree, please apply. Uh, SOM is a phenomenal business school. I think Jackson is a phenomenal uh, school of international global affairs. Um, and for the right person, I think the joint degree is just a very, very powerful uh, degree, very powerful educational experience. The students who do the joint degree have been remarkably successful professionally. Um, so for the right person, I think it's, it's quite an opportunity. Uh, if you still have more questions, please feel free to reach out to either uh, the team at SOM, if they're SOM specific, or I'm easy to find, feel free to shoot me an email. And if I don't know the answer, I can find out who on my team will. So to all of you, thank you. And, um, I hope we I hope we see some of you in New Haven. Bye bye.